For more tips and tricks, don't forget to hit that button and subscribe. Also, ring the bell so you can get notifications anytime I have new videos. Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. I'm Paul Ricaldi and today we are going to cover building a roof for my shed. Now I have an 8x12 shed and I'm going to show you a real easy way to cut your rafters and your gusset plates so we can put this together. Let's get started. I'm going to explain some of the components here. This is just an overhang for a shed. It's not a soffit, it's just an overhang. This right here is your rafter. At the top of your rafter is your plumb cut or your ridge cut. And what it would do is attached to a ridge board. If I had a ridge board that came across here, that's what it, that would attach to it and another rafter would come from this end, just like that. Now, I'm not gonna put a ridge board on here, so I don't need that. I'm just gonna have two mitered cuts. My next rafter is gonna come straight across here and we'll put a gusset plate on there to lock them in together. I put two gusset plates on here, one on each side of all my rafters except for the very last rafters on your shed. The reason why is because you can't have anything on the outside of this rafter. That sits flush with the edge. Your sheathing is going to act like a gusset plate on the two sides of your shed. So this one and this end one over here will only have an inside gusset plate. We're going to go back to this. That's your rafter. This is a vertical shoulder cut or a tail cut is what they call it. The reason why they call it a vertical is because it goes up and down. That's a vertical shoulder cut. Down here is a horizontal seat cut because it goes horizontal and it's a seat. It sits on top of your top plates. These are your top plates. This is your stud. Your studs would come across. Your top plate goes right across that. Your sheathing goes on the outside of that. Simple stuff, guys. This sheathing right here, I always make it lower than your um, rafter. So this can lay on top of there. If you put your sheathing on there and this sheathing on the outside is even with that top, it's going to stick up and it's not going to sit flush when you put your roof on. But you do not want to have it up because it will, it will stick up and give you a, a lump right there. That little overhang board is an inch and a half thick, so you have that, that variance. You can play within that range. Now this board right here would tie in across the face if you wanted extra bracing, and this would be your ceiling joist. Remember guys, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, so all I do is take my board, set it flat on here, and I'll mark it from the back side. Once you cut that off, like I did here, you can take and use this as a template for all of your other boards. And your ceiling joists will be easily cut just like you do in your rafters. If I were to build a platform up top, like I did in my other shed, I would tie these across just like this and lay sheets of plywood on there so I could put wood or anything up top in my shed. Put your eye right on the board. When you look down that, you'll see if the hump goes like this or, or if it bellies. You want to have it as straight as possible. But if you do have a slight hump in there, put it up top because that's where the strength is. It's like a bridge. You push it down, it's going to spring back. If you have it this way, you push it down, it's going to belly. You'll have a belly in your roof. I'm making a simple truss roof and I'm going to have gusset plates just holding it together. Super simple. So this board and this board have to meet in a direct middle of my, of my shed. It's eight foot wide. I need it four feet. That's the center. Even I can figure that one out. Now, on this book, it tells me for every one foot that I go out, I need 12.65 inches in order for it to, to match. So if I go 12 inches here, you need 12.65 inches right here to make it match up with the 12 inches because you're going on an angle, all right? That's simple. Now I take 12.65, I multiply it by four. I'm gonna come up with my calculator because I'm not that swift. I need 50.6 inches. So what I'm gonna do is make 50 and a half inches. That's all I need to do. I can round it down that tiny bit. Nobody will ever notice. I have a little doohickey. I just ground it out and I have a clip here with some uh, grip stuff on here so I can move this any way I want. Now I can just slide it up and down and make my cuts all the way. I'm going to put this right at 18 and a half inches. Flip this down and this right here is going to be my exact mark for every one of my cuts. That is my pivot point right here. And you'll see it says pivot 
it tells you in that corner with an arrow that it's pivot. You always look for that. That's where my pivot point's gonna go. It's gonna go facing upward, so I need this angle to be cut this way. I'll bring it back here till I go to 18 and a half, right there. That would be my mark. There's my mark at 50 and a half. Remember this little piece I have on my square? That makes it easier. I'll just slide it back, let it touch, and there's my mark. I'll double check my measurement, 50 and a half. You see I'm right on it. And we need to make our bird's mouth, right? With the Swanson Speed Square, there's a couple of ways to do this. You can take this and set it up just like this to where the pivot would go on the back side right here. See how that diamond, if I go and I swivel it over, it's gonna line up perfectly to where you have the top and the bottom of that diamond right in the middle of this hole. When you do that, you mark your line back toward your board that you, you're cutting from. Okay, this is my board, so I'm cutting, cutting toward my board. That bird's mouth right there should be three and a half inches back. You see that diamond? You have it on all of the Swanson Speed Squares. Once you have this mark, watch how easy it is. You take it and you're gonna have to have your mark on this side, so you slide it over, you flip it just like that. All you're doing is flipping it. Once you do that, the pivot is facing toward the front. You slide this back to where your diamond fits right on the top and the bottom of this line. You see that line goes directly through the diamond. So the peak is here and here. I'll make my mark. And there's your bird's mouth. The Swanson Speed Square makes it simple, but they also have another line right here that helps you out. So you can take this line right here, follow it with your marks on, on this. When you follow it the same line straight back, you will hit right on the line there. As long as you hit 45 degrees on the edge. If you're 40 degrees on the edge or 35, you're off. You come down, you slide it to where this line matches up with your mark there and you're at 45 degrees and there you go. You have another bird's mouth. So, now I'll just cut this part off. All you need to do is make one of these. You can write pattern or just put a big P on there. Every one of them copies this. You lay it down and you mark them and you make your cuts. If you guys have a miter saw, it's even easier. You can take your miter saw, set it up at 18 and a half degrees, make your cut. If you have a stop on the other end with a table, or with a stand, you can set it that way, slide it over, and make this cut. Now, every one of them is gonna be exact. It stops where it want, you want it to stop, you get your 18 and a half degree cut here and here, and everything's gonna be perfect on the line. It does make it easier and faster. The only thing you'll have to do is make the back part of your bird mouth when you cut that off. Here are my gusset plates. All I did was take a piece of plywood and cut triangles out of it. Once you make one of them, they can be your template you can mark off the others. All I did was mark it off from my speed square, my giant speed square. This is a 12 inch square. I set it on a piece of plywood, marked it off, made my cut. Now every one of them is gonna mimic this. Now there's another gusset plate that you can buy. Um, these are little nail gusset plates, they're plate nails. It's a bunch of little nails in there. They work real well, but they're more of a pain to put together because you have to take this and hammer it all the way down. I suggest using a heavier maul because it's wider and it's gonna get, staple them down easier. It's heavier, it's wider. But if I were you, I would just go ahead and make them out of a piece of plywood. I'm gonna use a small circular saw. You can use any circular saw, but I really like this one when I'm mimicking wood. I have this little guide that comes up when you set it in the mode for exact track. And the lever right here locks it in place where I can lock the plate down or I can have it to where it slides up. Now, 
it's going to just copy that cut right there. Now an experienced framer is not going to do this, but I'm going to show you how the DIYer would do this. You can take a piece of plywood and set it down and we'll mark off how my ridge goes so we can get the exact angle. That way we lay your boards down on an exact angle and every one of them is going to line up. I'm using inch and a half screws. We're going to take our two boards, set them up to where they marry each other perfectly. And then I can just mark it like this. Simple stuff. You don't have to do this. This will just help you to align every one of them in case you have a cut that's a little bit off. Next, I'm going to take my plate and I have a line right here, or right where my center is. Take this, spin it around, because it's good and strong, and we'll set it the same way. Now you can take your blade to where it rubs up against the, the wood right here and you follow that. You know how easy it is to build a truss roof for a shed? Nothing to this. And I'm gonna be covering every aspect of building this shed. So make sure to check out my future videos. If you guys don't mind, please hit like for me and drop a comment. It means a lot to me. I'll see you guys later.